Good afternoon. Welcome. Welcome. Just going to wait a few minutes um, so more folks can join. Please um, make yourself comfortable. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us today. We appreciate it. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. We're just going to wait another minute or two for folks to join in before we get started. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us today. We're just going to wait another minute or so for folks to join in, get comfortable, get you a glass of water or some tea and settle in with us for this next hour. We'll wait about one more minute and then go ahead and get started. Okay, I think we can go ahead and get started. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar titled, I Have This Data, Now What? Uh, my name is Jara Crowner, and I'm a policy and program analyst at UC Berkeley Safe Trek, which stands for the Safe Transportation Research and Education Center. Safe Trek's mission is the reduction of transportation-related injuries and fatalities through research, education, outreach, and community service. My colleague Aureli and I will facilitate today's event. Just an agenda for today, welcoming re remarks and housekeeping, the purpose of today's webinar, um, how to develop next steps for street story data, participant questions and discussion, and then we'll wrap it up. We have just a few house um, housekeeping rules um, to go over before we get started. So please mute your audio phone um, when you are not speaking to minimize background noise. Feel free to enter questions or comments in the chat. Please have your camera on when you're speaking if you are comfortable. And this is regarding um, the, the dis questions and discussion section. Um, and then all slides will be emailed to everyone registered for today's webinar. You think of a question or a comment later that you would like to share with us and or the registrants of this webinar, please email us at streetstory@berkeley.edu. Some Zoom logistics here just to show you where you can unmute or uh, mute yourself. 
where to stop or start your video, how to access the chat. And if you want to um, use a reaction, you can do so here. The purpose of today's webinar is to assess and interpret street story data to produce a narrative that creates actionable changes in your community. It's also to familiarize yourself with strategies used by communities to implement street story data in their communities and encourage engagement with street story. So a couple of years ago, we hosted part one of this webinar where we had a planner from Caltrans and a nonprofit organization um, in Humboldt County speak about their challenges and successes with engaging communities um, using street story. They spoke about initial excitement from residents to give in community input, but was concerned about the lack of momentum to keep folks engaged in the process. So this is why we wanted to do a follow-up webinar to part one. Before we dive deeper into our topics today, um, I have a few questions for you all. And please type your answers, um, questions, or feedback into the chat. Where is your community now? And where do you want to be? And your response can be as specific or as general as you will want it to be. Um, and when I'm asking where your community now, I'm asking, have they used Street Story or any other tool to give input? Um, how is the engagement in your community? Have you made an effort to engage folks about their travel, traffic, excuse me, or travel experiences in their area? And where do you want the, the community to be? Also, what actions are necessary to get there? What do you think are some actions necessary to get there? So we'll take a minute or two for you to drop your responses in the chat. And this is just to reflect on the work that you, you're doing, um, that you've been doing and what you wanna do, just to give you a clear picture of, of your vision for the future. Thank you for your participation. Now um, we'll do a street story demonstration. Before we dive into where and how to access uh, the data and next steps, let's take a look at some of the features of the tool. I don't want to assume that anyone on this call um, or that everyone, excuse me, on this call knows how to navigate the Street Story platform. So first I'll show how a user submits a report. We'll look over the report page where you can access the data. And then we'll take a look at the back end of Street Story where you can download into an Excel sheet to isolate some of the categories that you may be interested in, um, particularly the narratives. And then we'll take a look at some outreach materials as well. So I'm gonna take away, take a break from the slides right now and show the Street Story platform. So when a user goes to streetstory.berkeley.edu, they're initially asked to give input in a city, county, tribal, or an unincorporated area. They also have useful links here to go straight to the data page um, to check out our resources that we may have to support um, to engage communities, community stories, a custom boundary feature, et cetera and also to switch to the Spanish version if they want to submit a report in Spanish. The tool is available in English and Spanish um, and on this online platform and also in paper form, but there's only one database uh, for all of the data. So I'm going to enter in the city of Berkeley, select next, and then a user is asked to choose a location type for their story, um, be it specific location or point or street or line. 
And again, if they wanted to submit this information in Spanish, they have the option to do so here. Also, they can go straight to the C data page. So I'm going to select a point. And then there are tools on the left-hand side of the map to help the user navigate the map. They can zoom in, zoom out, go back to the original view, zoom to current location. There's a specific address they have in mind to, to submit a, a story. They can type it here, or they can use the polyline to draw around the location they would like to submit a story. So I'm going to zoom in. I'm clicking on the intersection of San Pablo Avenue and University Avenue in the city of Berkeley. Wherever a user clicks on a map, they should be able to see it um, on the right-hand side. So it doesn't look exactly where they pictured, they can readjust their point on the map. And then there are four report types that a user can submit a story on, a crash, a near miss, a hazard, or a safe location. Each report type has its own set of questions, but there aren't more than nine or 10 questions um, per report type. So I'm going to say um, that I or I experienced or witnessed a near miss at this intersection. So I will hit next. And then I'm asked about my experience. First, what was my mode of transportation? I can select biking. And then it'll ask more specifics. Was it a share bike or an e-bike? And I can say no. And then here I'm asked to um, report, you know, ask what when did this near miss happen? happen? Um, and I could select a report a month or year or report a specific day. So I can click and say February, 2024. But if you remember the specific date, you can definitely add it here. And then when did, when did this near miss happen? When it happened, excuse me, was it in the day or nighttime? I'll continue on and the questionnaire asks if the who else was involved? Was it a vehicle driver? Was it a pedestrian? And they can select all that applies. Were you or anyone else injured? What, how did the user feel about what caused um, this near miss? So was it poor lighting? Was it um, signs, signals, or markings? Um, was it an animal in a way? Was it due to speeding? And so they can also select all that applies here. And then the most important part of the street story platform are the narratives. In this space, we ask users what happened without providing any identifying information. Um, what do they think led to this near miss or what did they witness or experience um, with this report type? And so they're able to say here, um, I was biking along University Avenue and a motor vehicle um, swiped me on the left side. Um, and it can be as descriptive as, you know, as possible. So then they'll select next, and then they're asked what would make this place feel safer. And again, they can check all that supply. So is it slower speeds, or is it better or more sidewalks? Is it more lighting? Or maybe they feel like, you know, we need more education for road users on how to use the road, or more enforcement is needed. And they also have additional space here um, to tell us what will make this place feel safer. So after they answer these series of questions, um, they can choose to add another location to submit a report, or they can simply submit a report. So now um, they go into the demographic questions, which is an optional section um, and, and is mainly useful for organizations and agencies who want to use 
um, this type of information in their grant applications. And so they don't, you know, they don't have to submit this information, but if you're a community leader um, or planner who feel like this information is useful and you're collecting data in an area, you can ask, you know, residents, please complete the demographic portion of the survey. Once we go through that, um, it has been submitted. The support has been submitted. And also street story data is not meant to replace um, Twitter's data or, you know, what's already been reported is to help complete or paint a bigger picture of what's happening in areas is to supplement um, the data that we get from Twitter's or what we see mapped in TIMS. So now I will show you the report page. So this is just the data that's been captured in the city of Berkeley um, since 2019 to present day. If an agency in Berkeley wanted to do work um, and just pull, you know, had a, a specific project and wanted to pull entries just from last year, they're able to narrow down their reports by date here and filter, to that, filter the data. If they wanted to include reports outside of that, the area, they're able to do that as well. All of the data um, that you see on the report page can be downloaded and printed. Um, and all of the data is broken down in maps, charts, and tables. So first we see here, uh, the data is broken down into two maps. So the left map shows the crash and near miss reports and the right map shows the hazardous and safe location reports. And it's color coded by report type. So crash is red, near misses, orange, and so on. So you can, a user can um, use the icons on the left hand side of the map to navigate the maps. You can click on around on the dots um, to see more information. And this is an example of how you will see the narrative on the reports page. If you click on the dots, you will see the report type, the mode, as well as the narrative. And it's also important to note um, that once a user submits a report, they'll see the dot on the map, but they won't see their entry, they won't see the narrative. Um, SafeTrack team has to go through an internal process, which we call narrative cleaning, um, to make sure there isn't any identifying information in the narratives. So once we do that internal review um, and mark it as review, then anyone can see any narrative. So just looking at the Berkeley data, we see that 42% of reports submitted um, were hazardous reports, followed by um, near miss reports. And this just is a breakdown of this information in a pie chart. And then we have travel mode summary. Like I said, all of this can be downloaded into a PDF or an image. Um, then you have reports by mode. Reports by cause. So for folks who submitted a crash or a NIMIS report, 42% um, said that people don't yield. And then 22% said someone wasn't spe someone was speeding. And then you have here reports by improvement suggestions. So in Berkeley, we say 23% of folks who submitted a report said more enforcement of unsafe behavior is needed. Um, and then followed by more stop signs and or signals, as well as education for road users on how to use the road safely. Then we see the demographic information um, for the city of Berkeley. It's also important to note that if you have under 50 reports um, submitted in your area, you won't see the demographic information um, on the reports page. It doesn't mean it's not available. You just won't see it because it's under 50 reports. So if you have under 50 reports and you would like to use the, this demographic information, you can reach out to us and we'll uh, send it to you. It's also important to note um, that while we have the improvement narrative 
or improvement suggestion narrative. You won't see the improvement suggestive narrative um, here. You won't see it on the dots on the maps. You'll only see the crash near miss, the hazard or the safe narratives. In order to see the improvement suggestion narratives, you have to download the data into a, a file. And I'll show you that later as well. Also, if I wanted to switch or if a user wanted to switch to the Spanish report page, they have the, op you know, the option to do that as well. Another feature that we have of the tool is the custom boundary feature, which allows a community to create a boundary um, to share with the community to receive, in, um, to receive input. So they will select the county or city or enter a specific address um, and use these icons on the map to create a boundary. Or if you already have a boundary and you don't want to you know, go through creating another boundary, as long as it's one of these two files, you can upload your own boundary. It will populate on this map. And then you can create a project name, enter a due date for feedback, um, enter your information and then create a boundary. And what that does is uh, generate a QR code um, to share with communities. So say um, the city of Berkeley just wanted to get input from students at UC Berkeley and only wanted to know about their travel experiences around the campus. They could create a boundary around the campus um, and share that with students at the school. And so when students go to the link or scan the QR code, they won't have to navigate the entire city of Berkeley. It'll take them straight to the boundary um, around the university for them to give input. Also, another example of just how when to share a direct link to the community. So say, you know, um, you did want to get input from just the city of Berkeley and all of city of Berkeley. You will hit select or, excuse me, you will type in the city of Berkeley, hit next. If you see up here, it's already generated that lake for you, city, Berkeley. Um, so if I were to copy or cut here, sit here and paste, it will take me straight to the city of Berkeley boundary. And this is a link that you could share with your community as well. If you didn't you know, wanna create a specified, a specified boundary around a specific area. Um, I wanted to mention or mention the Excel sheet you will download um, to access all of the data. You can isolate this information by categories. And I just wanted to show you what it looks like in Excel. You see all the categories at top, at the top of the page. You can delete, you know, the categories that you don't need. Um, but what may be useful to you are the narrative categories. So crash, near miss, unsafe narrative, as well as safe location narrative. Um, but also the improvement narrative, which you don't see on that report page, the maps. And so we found since we've added this improvement suggestion question that a lot of people have um, specific ideas for improvement suggestions that, you know, are very helpful to an agency and organization um, who's, you know, trying to develop or uh, prioritize a project that they have in mind. And lastly, our outreach materials can be found um, at Street Story. At the first Give Input box, you'll see the resources here. If you exit out the box, you click on the map, you will see resources at the top where you can access um, the different resources that we have. Or you can go to safetrack.berkeley.edu 
And I'll just go back to our home page to show you how to get there. This is the home page. You'll go to Tools, Street Story. You can read more information about Street Story here. And then we have a technical assistant guides and resources here that you can access. Uh, most of the resources are to help the organization or um, agency to do outreach and promotion. But we do have a dedicated resource for community members or users who want to submit a report and want to know more information about Street Story, which is the uh, Street Story fact sheet that's available in English and Spanish. Now we'll go back to our slideshow here. So next, now that uh, you- Jara, we should take some time to, there was a couple of folks that responded to the questions from the earlier slide. Do you want to spend some time uh, do you want me to read them out loud just to sure. get a, a feel of where folks are? Yeah, it was a, a, a nice range. Um, Mario wrote that they're preparing to launch Street Story for the first time in their community, and they want their input to inform ATP projects in the community. Dorothy, hi Dorothy, is building on walk audits. Um, and Cindy mentioned that they're a community member in Arcata and they're wanting to understand how the data can be used. And Christine also mentioned that they just opened Street Story for their community and they need to know how to look at the data. So I hope that that was helpful for a couple of you. Um, and Colin also mentioned that they've been using Street Story since 2019 and they're now embarking on a new effort to promote it further. Thank so you. So those were a couple of the responses. So I wanted to highlight those. Yeah, and thank you all for sharing. I mean, the great thing about Street Story is you can use it in a variety of ways. So I know you mentioned a walk audit. It can be a part of a walk audit or assessment um, where you can decide with the community, you know, what areas that they want to look, you know, walk or bike. Um, to give input about their travel experiences from day to day. And so what you can do is, you know, take notes at the walk audit and then come back, you know, convene at a location and have them input that information from the walk audit into Street Story. And also for someone who mentioned, you know, uh, introducing it into their community for a first time, um, the great way you can do that is to introduce, you know, introduce it at an already existing community event or meeting. Um, we have flyers that you can tailor to your community to share with them online. If you have a city page or county page, or if you have um, social media pages um, that you can share a link to Street Story, that's a way to introduce it as well. Um, if you have an open street event where you know, you know there'll be a group, a lot of folks from um, different backgrounds and, um, you know, who may have not heard of the tool at all, you can introduce it there. You can, you know, print out a map of your city or area and have it on the table, you know, and say, we want to get input, you know, input to help the, straight, the streets um, feel safer for all road users. Um, and you can, you know, print out those uh, street story uh, paper copies that are color coded by report type um, and have them to submit a report, you know, at a, open street event, or you can give them the flyer at the event to take home and submit, you know, when they have time. So thank you all for sharing that. So now after you have, you know, collected the data, where do I go from here? Um, you will want to develop findings and identify collaborators, look for trends and patterns, you know, in, including, you know, what changes should we implement programmatically, um, behavior-wise, infrastructure, or non-infrastructure. And then develop an action plan. What projects do you want to prioritize? What communities should you target? Who should be involved in implementing changes and getting the community involved? So for today, I'm going to use the city of Exeter as an example. Um, it's a city in Tulare County with about 10,000 residents. Um, last year, we had Caltrans D6 planner reach out about a, feas a feasibility study of state Route 65 that runs straight through the city. 
um, and is a hazardous location for students, parents, staff who travel to and from school every day. So they already had a feasibility study in mind um, based off the data that they look at, you know, looked at from TIMS um, and, you know, already identified some trends and patterns and said, well, hey, you know, before we go forward, let's hear from the community, you know, and so part of that action plan was identifying, you know, and prioritizing City of Ed Exeter folks um, and involving who should, you know, hop on board. And so the collaborators were superintendent, caregiver, students, um, city council member, and parents, just a collection of folks um, who knew the city, who, who have a relationship with um, residents in the city, um, who said, hey, sure, you know, we don't mind, you know, this is a great idea. We, we need to make this place feel safer for folks. And what better way to do that, you know, than engaging them? And so one way they did outreach uh, was using the Parent Square app, um, which is something that the superintendent, superintendent um, suggested to use since it's their way of communicating with parents um, at the schools and say, hey, you know, we'll develop our own messaging um, in so many words, you know, what should we say? You know, are we gonna highlight the feasibility study or not or, you know, and so, we had meetings, several meetings to, you know, um, identify and develop the best language to use. Um, and so they, the superintendent sent out messages on Parent Square app within a month's time. And then they, uh, the city council member and the Caltrans planner um, promoted the tool at the back to school night events for elementary, middle and high school students. And so from this, uh, within like two weeks, time they were able to collect almost um, 200 reports. And so the trends and patterns, the, you know, the already existing feasibility study, um, the community feedback, concerns with travel experiences along that state route, and then the desire for behavior and infrastructure um, changes. And so the data that I showed you on the report page, um, you know, has several data visualization tools. And in general, Tools like charts, bar graphs, histograms, and pie charts can help you interpret different types of data um, and present your data you know, points with clear recommendations um, for that community. And so I wanna show you the flyer that the city of Exeter collect, uh, created for outreach. So we do have um, street story templates um, available in English and Spanish that you can use and tailor to your community. And so here you see, you know, they talked about the, the feasibility study or, you know, getting input around state route 65, state route 65, um, and how this survey will allow community members to notify Caltrans where improvements could be made to facilitate more active transportation on the state highway system. And so here you see there's a link to um, Exeter. And there also was a QR code created for them. So if they can, you know, if they printed out the flyer and shared it at the back to school night events or shared it online or via the Parent Square app, um, someone could easily scan the QR code and it will take them directly to the city of Exeter to submit a report. And just to also show you the Spanish version of this flyer as well. Okay, and so now you've got all of that data um, and your analysis, what's next? From there, once you collect this data, once you've identified trends, once you've gotten the community input, it's time to develop recommendations. Um, is it infrastructure? Is it behavioral? Is it uh, programmatic? And is there a time frame you have in mind? Um, are you gearing up to prepare for ATP cycle seven or, um, Safe Streets for All funding or any other application, you know, based off what you're applying for, you should develop those recommendations. And one way that we can be helpful in supporting that, in the past we have um, written, you know, support letters for agencies um, who use Street Store in their work, 
you know, um, and wanted to continue to use that once they got the funding, um, if they, you know, did get the funding. And also, we'll have a follow-up webinar um, this year to talk more specifically about the grant funding process and how to connect with de decision makers. And we're going to have a panelist from L.A. County who has built relationships with decision makers in the county for over 10 years, um, has done extensive work to engage, you know, decision makers with um, their constituents. And so we're, we will have that follow up event or webinar and be on the lookout for that so you can join us for the next one so now i will pass it over to Arelli, um, who will provide some more examples of the street story data um, with analysis interpretation and suggested changes and next steps yeah hi everyone and thank you jara for setting the scene and also the really great example with the folks in exeter and Something that when we go out with communities and we talk about street story and then we conduct the trainings, we show folks how to use um, street story. But when we do these trainings, we have a wide range of participants. Like Jar mentioned, sometimes there are caregivers or there are school officials and folks who don't necessarily have a, a training in transportation. And so we want to make sure that they could move in from move from the data collection phase into implementing changes. And so um, Jara and I decided to provide just some examples of how a street story narrative might in, can be analyzed and interpreted. Again, very high level um, analysis and interpretation and then try to identify those suggested changes. So whether it's behavioral um, or uh, infrastructure change or it might even require both. Um, and so for this example, an individual uh, for like the narrative portion that Jara, when walking through all those steps um, and why we say it's really important because it's the community's voice that is being represented. And so in this narrative, the individual wrote that like, I prefer to ride the bus to work, but I do not have somewhere to lock my bike. And it is typically too hot to wait for the bus. And so as folks in transportation, we're then thinking about a lack of bus shelter and maybe we want to add additional bicycle parking racks um, or, or just because the lack of protection for an individual's um, bike because a bicycle can be a really important asset and can also be expensive. Um, for folks to have and so they it might not be it might not be worth the risk if they can't go to the grocery store and use their bike um because uh, they fear that it'll be um stolen and so we have that um, analysis but then there might be similar participants um, who are responding to street story and so then you could input number or percentage of street story respondents expressed um, similar concerns along like University Avenue or along like Telegraph and Grand, for example. And so then it can really highlight the need for um, like additional bicycle parking or maybe a bus shelter at, along a certain corridor if multiple people are expressing um, that need. And Jara, we could move on to the next slide. And another example is that an individual responding with numerous times on Brant's Fort Drive, people drive too fast or pass unsafely or within three feet of me when riding, which is incredibly safe and there's no enforcement. So this individual is, uh, is bicycling and they probably submitted that they were biking along um, Brantsport Drive. And so they're concerned about the distance between um, a driver and um, them while they're driving. And so something that could be helpful for them is a buffered bike lane. And so that might require some additional concerns with other folks who might not necessarily be driving, but they might express concerns where they're like, whenever I'm walking down Brantsport Drive, um, but uh, cars are speeding. So there's a lot of concerns with um, speeding along that corridor. And so some of the uh, changes that could be suggested would be like, uh, maybe there is, again, a buffered bike lane or an additional 
Uh, when we think about suggestions, we also want like multiple tiered suggestions. So we want something that is immediately can provide some sort of relief to community members and we want more like medium term and longer term. So for here, you might want to have additional signage or if an individual is concerned about walking along Brant's Fort Drive, they might want um, a hawk to help them uh, like notify the drivers that they're using the crosswalk. And so in the next example, um, we provided just different approaches that folks will have. So um, variety in the life cycle of a project is super um, important because a lot of folks who are involved with uh, like city planning know that it can be quite a while for a city like project um, to be implemented. And even before it is, it begins to be implemented, it needs to become a city led project. And so that's why approaches like um, here, we have a video linked by the traffic advisory committee in Westmont High School, which is uh, a high school that we were able to work with um, as a safe track project team. And one of the strategies that um, something that they were really concerned was unsafe driving during arrival and dismissal times. And so this student created a video, which was, um, we'll definitely share it out with you all and you should watch it. It was very funny and it was very approachable to other students. And so they were um, essentially just reminding drivers to slow down and be aware of their, their surroundings because the Westmont High School students um, will bike and walk and scooter to school. And of course, some will also drive. And so that was also a neat way to address concerns with um, speeding vehicles, which was shared in the previous example. And another project, which would be more um, medium term is what I like to call it, is a quick build project. So this is a semi-permanent project that can be implemented within a year to prioritize um, the safety of those using the streets. And so these are also intended to test improvements that can undergo changes after installation. And this could also be used to introduce um, community members to a different um, like traffic treatment so that folks can get used to it um, and get acclimated to it uh, and I also wanted to then skip on to the next slide um, because the, I know that we were talking about like individuals feeling um, unsafe on in the previous example. And so having a high intensity activated crosswalk um, would have been a really great tool. And so also with having like a quick build project, of course it wouldn't be um, a hawk, but it can just also show folks that like, okay, we have this like um, a, a safety messaging campaign, which is more that can be implemented within a few months. And then within a year, the like folks are like, okay, so we're, we're taking, um, like the local city decision makers are taking our concerns around brand support drive serious. Um, and they're implementing this quick build project and it's like temporary, but then having something like a hawk, which is a permanent um, infrastructure uh, change is, is a really big deal. But again, the creation of a city led project has multiple, multiple steps um, before it can even be implemented. And this does, it can be a length, lengthy time um, where like, of course there's like public planning involved. Um, and then there, the project also needs to move through the approvals process. And then of course, like finalizing the construction details for the project and all of the little details that come with those city led projects. And while like, for example, the hot could have been in the um, moving through the approval process, like the quick build project might have been maintaining that momentum in the community. And I'll, I'll get Jara. Thank you, Aureli. Thank you for sharing. Um, now, after you've heard us talk um, and present information about how to access the data, how to submit a report, um, ways to implement or strategies, um, developing recommendations, we want to ask you some questions and open this time up for discussion. 
Um, so if you have any questions, you can take yourself off um, of mute. You can share your, uh, if you want to uh, turn your camera on, you can do so. Or if not, you can just type your questions um, into the chat and we'll address them. And while you're thinking about your questions, I want to ask the first question. Um, have you noticed, you know, for those who have collected um, community level data, or specifically street story data, have you noticed any patterns in the type of feedback your community provides? Um, do reports tend to focus more on concerns for bicyclists as opposed to concerns for pedestrians or are reports, you know, concentrating in one specific area of your city? Thank you for typing that in the chat. Anyone wants to answer? Okay, well, while you're thinking about it, let me ask another question. <laughs> Are there vulnerable populations in, commun in your community that you would like to work with? And do you feel like Street Story, you know, will be a useful tool to help you address those, you know, vulnerable populations? Uh, Jara, Edgar responded and mentioned that for Exeter, high speeds tend to be a common concern. And Dorothy responded that areas of concern are often around schools and the parks. Schools and parks. Thank you both. And Edgar, for Exeter, are those hot speeds related to that state route, or is that just an issue um, in every area of the city? Uh, yeah, uh, sorry, yeah, I should have been more specific. But yeah, for just looking at the responses, uh, it would be along the uh, state route corridor, essentially uh, the state route serves as their main street. Um, but again, that was the common um, response along state route 65 high speeds as you come into the town from either side thank you edgar and everyone edgar was the planner from caltrans district six who six who led the effort um for using street story in um the city of exeter so glad to have you with us um edgar thank you so much yeah thank you jar and thank you for the recap it was very very well detailed so thank you Let's see, we have Sarah. Um, Sarah, you're from Shasta, is that correct? I want to get your location wrong. You said we would like to, yes, Shasta, thank you for joining us. We would like to reach more of the unhoused population that live along very busy, unfriendly, paid by a quarter. That's, that's um, very important. Thank you for sharing that. And Colin from Humboldt County said, we would like to use Street Story to engage transit riders about access to bus stops. Really cool. Okay. Um, a last question that I have is that, is your community considered a disadvantaged or priority community? Um, is it a community that would benefit from changes in the built environment. So is it considered a disadvantaged or a priority community? And is it a community that will benefit, you think will benefit from changes in the, uh, in the built environment? Okay, and I see um, Dorothy, you responded to the last question or the first questions, parents, are wanting to lead change for safer streets on walking needs for sidewalks and traffic common me measures. That's awesome. I think maybe the, and I know Dorothy, you're aware from the uh, of the program. Uh, Dorothy's from uh, Altadena, um, but you may, one way to, you know, get pa parents on board may uh, be through the community pedestrian and, uh, and bicycle safety training um, led by safe safe track team so 
that may be one way to get more parents involved. But also, like I mentioned, um, what the superintendent did using, you know, the parent school app, there was a way to get, you know, folks involved with using Street Story. Okay, Edgar mentioned, yes, many communities in District 6 are considered DACs and can benefit from changing from changes in the built environment. Mario, um, yes, disadvantaged priority community that is lacking pedestrian and bicycle infrastructure. And Mario, you're from the city of Tul uh, Tulare, correct? Uh, uh, yes, uh, city of Tulare. Awesome. And I know you all are starting to um, use street store and some efforts as well around, I think, a state uh, route that runs through the city. Yes, correct. And, and I have the benefit of working with Edgar, who's a, a champion for, for District 6 on this topic. And so it's a multi-agency effort to address some of these needs in our community. Thank you for sharing that. And I will say, I, I think one of our goals um, as a street store team is to be like a liaison for folks. So if there are other, you know, from being here at the webinar and seeing folks from different, you know, areas of the state, um, there may be a planner you, you know, you want to reach out to or, you know, who's done what you're trying to do. Um, and if that's the case, we can share the information with you um, and, you know, find ways for you to connect with each other and share knowledge. Cindy said, we are using Street Story to gather residents info, collision data for active transportation program, um, grant application cycle seven, Big Pine. Okay. Um, so it's a tribal area. Um, have you started talking to the, you know, tribal communities about using Street Story? Have, do you have an approach for um, promoting the tool and doing outreach in that area? Cindy, if you don't mind answering. Yes, so um, we have been collecting data for the past year because the Cycle 7 applications are due in June. <laughs> so we have done a lot of it. Um, it was mostly because so we are a very rural area and we are um, also disadvantaged community being on a reservation. But um, we don't really have collision data or you know some of the safety information on the safety issues that need addressing. And, and one of those issues is you know getting students from the reservation to school safely. And the school, it's an all-in-one school, so it has elementary to high school. So it, it borders the reservation. So just students, you know, able to get to school safely and there's an intersection on the reservation that um, sometimes people have to cross a federal highway. And of course, cars don't slow down <laughs> coming into town. So, you know, there's multiple safety issues. And Caltrans is, you know, dealing with some of them already. But, you know, we definitely want to promote safe ways for people to ride their bikes and to walk to, to these different locations. So. The street story is a you know it's big advantage and just that we have the data and we have information from people who are living in these places and, and the things that they've seen that might not necessarily have been reported. So thank you for sharing that. And I know that's a unique situation. Um, we do have the tribal street story tool. Um, but in the past we've had trouble with, you know, engaging tribes. Uh, due to privacy concerns because the information is, you know, free and publicly accessible. So if you would like mm -hmm. to connect, um, let's do that. You know, let's find a way to get that information. I know with uh, one of the other programs that we have at Street Story, I mean, at Safe Trek, excuse me, we've created a separate um, survey for tribes um, and maybe, you know, have and have had tribal leaders to, you know, get the information from um, the community, and then, you know, they uh, report the information back to us. Um, so thank you for sharing, you, you know, your unique situation. And I think, you know, we'll, we can find a way to approach using street story, um, using tribal street story in that community. Thank you. Yeah, that would, that would be very helpful. Thank you. 
Okay, um, we have about five more minutes left, or well, four now. Um, were there any more questions? Um, if you have resources that you would like for us to share um, with you know, other folks on this call, please drop them in the chat. Um, we'll send up a follow, we'll send out a follow-up email with the slides and the recording from today, um, along with some additional resources, um, which is a, you know, our TIMS uh mapping system or tra transportation injury mapping system or TIMS, which is a web-based tool that allows users to analyze and map data uh, from Twitters. Um, the street store platform itself, CATSIP, which is our California Active Transportation Safety Information Pages, um, all things active transportation. It's a really great uh, resource. And then the California Traffic Safety Dashboard, which is one of our newer resources at SafeTrack. Um, so like I said, if you have any resources that you would like for us to share or highlight um, in an upcoming newsletter, news item, or our quarterly e-blast, Feel free to email us at any time at streetstory.berkeley.edu um, or like I said, just drop your resources in the chat and we'll make sure to share them out with folks. And thank you all so much for your time. Um, like I said, if you have any more questions, we're here to two o'clock. And if not, you can take those three minutes and go fill up on your water or tea and have a good rest of your day. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Take a try. Thank, Thank you. you all. Thank you. Thank you so much. Like I really appreciate everything. Thank you.